Hi, I'm Alexis, the owner and designer at Merge and Center. Thank you so much for purchasing the Home Inventory Google Sheets template. This tool is really useful for keeping track of all of your valuables, including things like serial numbers and descriptions, any identifiable information that you would need to, say, file an insurance claim or any kind of other report where your personal property might have been affected, such as a theft or something like that. Let me show you around the tool. It's pretty straightforward. The first thing that you're going to want to do is add items to your inventory because it's going to come to you completely blank. There are a couple of different ways that you can add items to the home inventory. Let's go to the inventory sheet to take a look at what that looks like. If you wanted to add your items directly to this spreadsheet, you could definitely do that. And the way that you can add more rows is by using this add more rows at the bottom feature. This is built into Google Sheets. I would recommend starting with a small number and then working your way up as you need more. You can always add more later. So I could easily add items directly in like this. Now there's one other way that I could add items to my inventory, and that is using a form that's actually attached to this Google Sheet. And the way that you find that form so that you can use it is you'll go to the customize sheet. The customize sheet gives you instructions right here on how to access the new entry form. So you'll go to tools, manage form, and go to live form. This is gonna open the new inventory entry form in a new tab in your browser. So the form is really nice if you want to use your mobile device to add items to your inventory. So let's say you want to be able to walk around your house and add items as you come across them, you know, go into the living room and maybe get your information from your big television set, go into the kitchen, maybe get some information on your appliances. So what you're going to want to do is probably copy this URL and either email it to yourself or airdrop it to yourself if you're a Mac user, whatever method you would normally use to share something to your mobile device. I'm gonna add something in here just so that we can see what it looks like. The file upload option here in the form will actually upload whatever you add to it to your Google Drive. So the Home Inventory Google Sheet is going to live in your Google Drive as soon as you copied it. As soon as you clicked that Make a Copy button to get your own copy, that saved it into your Google Drive. And so it's going to be a very similar location where all of your uploaded files end up. And they're going to be in a folder called New Inventory Entry. And then in parentheses, it's going to say File Responses. That's where you're going to see all of those uploaded items. So I'm going to add something here. You can add items from your device. So if you're doing this on your mobile device, you can kind of just switch over to your phone app, take a picture and then attach it here. I'm just gonna select something as an example and upload it so we can see what that looks like. All right, so we're gonna go back over to the home inventory. So if I go back to the inventory sheet now, you can see that my new item was added here at the top. Some things to keep in mind if you're gonna be adding things directly to the spreadsheet and using the form is, as you can see, the font is not consistent. And that's because when the entries come from the form, they just default to the most default font in Google Sheets, which is just Arial. So if that bothers you, you can definitely just select the row and, and change the font for anything that you add with the new entry form. The other thing to notice is that it is adding items to the top of this form rather than the bottom. So when we added five new rows, they appeared below and your new entry forms are going to appear above. So again, if this is something that bothers you and you wanna clean things up, you can always just select certain rows if you wanna get rid of them and delete them just to kind of clean things up a little bit. The status column here is the only one that doesn't get updated from the form. So that is where you would just come and select 
oh, this item is in storage or whatever the status is. So that's how you're going to add all of your inventory items. So that's probably going to be the longest part of the process as you kind of go through your home and find your valuable items, find their serial numbers, flip them upside down or whatever to get all that important information. But it's going to be really essential to have that if anything happens like water damage or theft or anything like that. The inspiration for me actually creating this tool was because years ago I had an incident where my house was burglarized, a lot of my valuables were stolen, and unfortunately there was not a lot that I could put into that police report because I didn't have serial numbers for anything. All I could say is my iPod got stolen, my laptop got stolen, my jewelry all got stolen, but I didn't really have any identifiable features. I didn't have receipts. I didn't know how much it was all worth. So there wasn't really a whole lot that could be done. So this is just a way to kind of cover yourself in case any of those incidents happen. All right, so there's two more sheets to look at here. The insurance and warranty sheet is where you can track all of your insurance policies. So let's say I have a homeowner's insurance policy that covers the majority of my personal property. I'm probably going to add that one in here. Policy expiration and warranty expiration fields will turn orange when the date is within the month. They will turn red when the date is today and they will turn gray and crossed out when the date is passed. The way the warranties drop down works is because you are putting warranty information in for something that theoretically is in your inventory list already. This drop down actually just pulls from the inventory sheet. As you can see, there's also this inventory header and item name header in there. That's just in there because of the way that I built this drop down menu. It was the best way that I could do it without risking that items would not be included if you added rows to the bottom of your inventory sheet. So just kind of ignore those. They're just kind of headers there. But as you can see, the guitar and the test item are both on here. So if I had a warranty for one of those, I could select that item and then I could add all of my warranty information here. The incidents sheet is for keeping track of those incidents that I was referring to, such as water damage or theft or whatever ends up happening that affects your personal property. So let's say I had a water damage incident, I could select it there. And then under type, what's going to happen is any insurance providers that you entered on the insurance and warranty sheet are going to show up here, as well as options for warranty claim and police report. If you're ever curious about where to find any of these things, these links that are in the headers kind of help you determine where you can do certain things. So like here, it says add insurance providers. If you click on that, it's going to bring you to the column where you can do that. So if I had another insurance provider, for an example, I could add it there and then back on the incident sheet, that is now an option. Once you are done tracking an incident, so like when you first submit it, it's gonna be pending, but let's say the claim gets paid out, you can copy and paste the row for the claim that is all done and you can move it down to closed incidents if you just want a historical record of things. The customize sheet is where you can actually customize all of these drop down menus that you've been seeing on other sheets. So we've got item status. This was on the inventory sheet where we're tracking, oh, something's in great condition or it's in storage or it's missing. We've got our incident status, warranty status, and then of course, this cute little choose your emoji. So again, these have links in the headers. So if you're wondering, where this drop down appears and you just kind of want to take a look at it before messing around with stuff. You can click on that link and it'll bring you to where that drop down menu appears so you can get a sense of what it's being used for. And then you can also link back to it on this customized drop down link that I have provided here. And that's the case for all of these. So incident status, if you're wondering where that is, you can go and click there and it'll show you where that drop down is and you can also link back to the customize sheet. I may have forgotten to mention this before when I was talking about the new entry form, but these instructions here actually also include a little tip here, which is to just to say, if you want quick access to the new entry form without having to go tools, manage form, go to life form, you can copy the URL for your form and then just insert that link into this new entry form cell, which I've already done that. So you can see the links already there, but you would just right click on it and go to insert link, oops. 
which right now it says edit link, but it would say insert link if there's no link there. And that's how you can add it as a quick access button. You can also minimize these instructions if you kind of want to clean up the customize sheet a little bit. And you still have access to your quick access button if you've created it. And then you can just expand it if you ever need to look at those instructions again. Once you've added stuff into the home inventory sheet, that's when you're going to start seeing the home inventory dashboard starting to change. You'll get to see how many of each type you have in here. So eventually you're gonna have a bunch of appliances. Maybe you collect art, you're gonna have a bunch of that. All of those are gonna show up here and this is going to adapt and show you basically how much out of the whole is jewelry, how much is musical instrument. We only have two items right now, so it's a 50-50 split. But as you add more items, let's just add a few more to get a sense. And I'm not going to fill out these entire rows. I'm just going to fill out parts of them so we can kind of get a sense of what this looks like. So I go back to the dashboard and it's going to say, oh, you have one antique, one appliance, one garment accessory, and then you're going to see that adapt. The estimated value is really handy, especially if you have like a large scale event where you need to tell an insurance company basically how much you lost in value. And you can add the value for each of your items, however you determine. So if that's replacement cost for you, if that's the worth of something after it's appreciated or possibly after it's depreciated, however you determine you want to add the estimated value, just bear in mind that it should be a number that you would be comfortable telling like an insurance provider. So be a little bit generous with your values. And then this just tells you how many ongoing incidents you have. So the water damage incident that I added over here is being counted towards the dashboard right here. Hopefully you'll never have more than one and maybe hopefully you'll just have zero. And all of this is just gonna be something that you put in place for peace of mind. And then there's also a little notes section at the bottom here in case you have anything that you just wanna jot down in a very open-ended fashion. So that's pretty much it. Those are all the sheets. They're all pretty self-explanatory. There are some resources on the customized sheet, such as tutorial videos. There's the home inventory tutorial link that you're watching right now, right there. Thank you so much for purchasing the home inventory by Merge and Center. Have a great day.